Welcome to Big Design. We're here with Jared Spool from UIE uh, to talk a little bit about what he's working on, uh, what his experience is, and uh, some of his favorite things. Tell us, what, what are you working on right now that's, that's got you super excited? Uh, well, I've spent the uh, last few years starting a school. The Center Center? The Center Center. It's a school for UX designers, uh, industry-ready UX designers. We have our first cohort. Uh, they're uh, just finishing up their first of the two years, and they are way ahead of where we expected them to be. They are producing great designs on projects, and it's uh, really fantastic to see the students coming along as quickly as they are. So we're, it's just been a lot of fun. So at Center Center, uh, most of us UX designers didn't get a chance to have an official education surrounded around UX design, and all the time I get asked, what do I need to study to become a UX designer? I found myself going to Center Center's website and looking at your list because I don't think I've ever seen a more comprehensive and accurate list of what it takes to be an actual functional UX designer than your curriculum. How did you come up with that robust and solid curriculum? Oh, we interviewed uh, dozens and dozens of hiring managers and basically surveyed them on, on what they needed people to be able to do when they hired them. And so that's basically their shopping list. So uh, when we first saw it, we thought, wow, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, but the students are just taking it in, and it's, it's the way we've designed the program. Every course, they only take one course at a time. Each course is three weeks long, every day, Monday through Friday, from 8.30 in the morning to five o'clock at night. And- so it's like a job. It's, well, that's the whole thing. One of the things that the hiring managers told us was that uh, the students that they were getting, that they were graduating and, and getting as employees, didn't know how to work. If you, in, in a contemporary university or college, you take a class for an hour and a half, two hours, maybe three hours a day, twice a week, something like that right, class is 18 hours long, you're basically taught as a college student that if you can sit still for 90 minutes, you can go play Frisbee. And college students come out of that environment not knowing how to sit still for longer periods of time, not knowing how to work at a desk, not knowing how to, how to do basic work. If you're an A student in a, a contemporary design school, you you, you work on projects, classes often have projects, you probably take three to five classes at a time. Each class uh, uh, has some project associated with it, which means you got three to five projects at a time, right? You're expected to put 30 hours of work into a project. And at the end of that, the semester, you hand in your project, almost all of them are due on the same day, not because in the real world we always have our projects due on the same day, but because that's the day this, the teachers have it so that they can get the grades in on time. So everybody has their projects due at the same time. And then uh, you hand in your project, and if you're an A student, you get this piece of paper back, and it says it has an A on it. Maybe there are notes on the margins from the professor on what you could do better next time, except why would you pay attention to those? You got an A. And you come back and, and you, that's your whole career is you just keep getting A's that way and you do design. And the hiring managers told us that, that when those, those students, those A students come into their workplace, oftentimes they actually don't know how to do the work because the projects themselves are only 30 hours long, right? In industry, we have a name for the 30 hour point in a project, we call it Thursday. So the, <laughs> right? so the students don't know how to do projects that last for six, eight, 10, 12 weeks. They don't know how to do all the phases of the project because when you only have 30 hours, you break it into discrete pieces, but you never sew them together. And because you always got A's, you hand your, your design over to the developers. The developers look at it and say, that's very nice. We'll never be able to build that. And, uh, and the students, don't know how to react to that. The graduates don't know how to react to that. They go, you don't understand. This is A work. I always get A's. You, you've never been to design school. What do you know? This is A work. And they, and they, they just can't function in this environment. And you know, as, as anyone who's done design work in industry knows, the f design portion 
of each project is 90% of the work. And then there's the part where you get it through development. And that's the other 90% of the work. <laughs> and so we're basically trying to teach the students the full 180%. We, they need to be able to do the whole 180 uh, uh, in order it. to uh, get the job done. Yeah. So our, all of our projects have to have a development component. When a company gives our students a project to work on, they actually have to commit developers to work with the students to build out what they design, assuming they like the design. And as a result, uh, the students get firsthand interaction with a development team that says, hey, we've only got 150 hours budgeted here. We can't do this in 150 hours. You have to cut it back, which is what real development is like, working within constraints. What kind of efforts does Center Center make to help prepare your design students for that other aspect of it, which is managing business and people and time and projects and all that other stuff? A third of the courses are soft skill courses. Uh, so we had a course on presenting for the first cohort. Uh, they took that. Mike Montero was the instructor, so he came in and, and spent two days with them and, and they practiced and practiced and practiced just presenting. They had already had a course on storytelling and scenarios uh, that Kim Goodwin had taught. And that course was uh, about how to formulate a story to tell. And in that course, they had to present the story, but we didn't focus on the presentation side. Then when Mike came in, they were able to take the stories that they'd worked on for Kim's course, and they now use that to get training from Mike. And so all the courses sort of weave together. And they've already, Adam Connor came down and taught uh, critique and design studio, which is a different type of presentation um, when, you're, when you're presenting your work for critique. Uh, so he talked about getting feedback, working through that. Uh, Kevin Hoffman is coming uh, next week uh, to teach a course on uh, facilitated leadership and running meetings and how do you move a meeting forward? How do you get a decision to be made? And to understand that there are different types of meetings that have different purposes. You know, sometimes you, you have a meeting which is just a status update, and sometimes you have a meeting to work through an issue. And how to s create agendas and schedule and lead those meetings uh, through that. So we're, we're teaching the students along with, you know, information architecture and visual design and user research and ethnographic practices. We're teaching them uh, those soft skills because, as you're right, you cannot as a designer function in a corporate workplace without having those skills. I mean, the, the students coming out of school today, the managers were telling us that they can't, they can't write a simple email. Everything's a novel. And that uh, they can't sit in a meeting without it looking like it's killing them. <laughs> and uh, so we're working on all those things. It was, it was amusing. We had some uh, senior managers doing a workshop uh, with themselves. So we, we have, a, we have a, a, a strategy workshop that we do with senior, senior management. And we hold it at the school now. And the students were there, and we invited them to meet these senior managers, senior UX managers, for lunch. And one of the students takes my co-founder, Leslie, aside and says, can, can we meet in your office? Says, sure. She says, I, I want to make a really good impression, and I want to give them my business card. We made business cards for all the students. I want to give them my business card, but I, I don't know how to do that without looking dorky. And so uh, Leslie and the students and a couple other people practiced giving business cards for a few minutes mm -hmm. so that she felt comfortable giving a business card to a senior manager. That's, that's awesome. So Jared, you've made uh, a wonderful career and a nice name for yourself by speaking, presenting, and, and hosting conferences. Well, technically, I had nothing to do with my name. It, that is it was true. assigned at birth. But you <laughs> made your name into something, right? Okay. So, uh, and, and I didn't really discover design conferences until Big Design. And when I finally discovered it, I was like, where have you been all my life? Um, you've got a lot of students at Center Center. Uh, there are a lot of people watching this video who may have never been to a conference and they're interested. Those people? Yes, those people. <laughs> we, we don't talk about them too much. I was wondering what they were doing over yes, there. Yes, yes. So what, what kind of advice would you have to students and junior designers or even senior designers who maybe don't regularly attend a conference. Why would they come to Big Design? Why would they come to uh, your conference? Uh, why would they go to any conference? What do they get out of it? 
the, the main reason that, that conferences, there, there's a lot of reasons to come to conferences. Uh, and big design is actually very different than our conference. So it's, the reasons are actually somewhat separate. Big design is very much a Dallas conference. It's definitely a Texas conference. And so most of the people are from Texas. I've met people here from Houston, San Antonio, Dallas. And I think that there's something for knowing the others in your community. Just being able to hear the work they're doing, seeing what the other companies are doing, really getting a sense as to, as to what that is. Because if you're any good at what you do, you're going to have opportunities in your career. You're going to have an opportunity to move to another company, to move to another organization, or to stay. I mean, anytime uh, you're staying at a company, you should be staying because you want to be there, because it's actually a great place to work. You're having a lot of fun with the projects. You're growing. Um, uh, you shouldn't be at a company because you're trapped, right? Mm -hmm. you, because, you know, you don't think you could get a job someplace else. So I think that, that Big Design in particular is a great conference for people to see what, what else is happening and to sort of see what problems they're solving, how they solved it, is that something you can do in your work, and to explore lots of different topics. Uh, our conferences are a bit different. They are uh, more focused on full day workshops. So whereas a conference like Big D, maybe 20, 30% of the attendees will go to a workshop that's a half a day or a full day. Uh, at our conferences, 95% of the attendees go to a full day workshop. And the full day workshops are intended for really getting into a topic with an expert and learning that topic. So I hand pick the speakers. Big D has like 90 presenters or something crazy like that, 100 presenters. Uh, we have eight. <laughs> and so you get a lot of time with these experts mm -hmm. and you get to really get to know them. And, and you, can, you can bring your problem and say, this is our situation. How, how would you help us solve this? And, uh, and you'll get that really important advice. And so, so it's, a, it's a very different type of experience. For instance, Mark Stickdorn is teaching a, a workshop on service design, and people love this workshop. It is uh, eight hours of making stuff, uh, basically redesigning a transit system in Boston. And the first thing we do is we send everybody out to South Station, the train station, to do interviews, to collect data, to observe. And then they come back and they redesign the ticketing systems and the flows and the in the station and, and all these things. And all of that is designed to uh, really give you a deep exposure to, to that, that subject. And we have, for this year, we have eight different topics, information architecture, um, storytelling, uh, scenarios, design sprints, um, there's eight of those, and uh, Dan Mall is doing a full day workshop on creating a multi-platform des design process. So how do you create a smooth, seamless design process that, that gets you, your designs out to big screens and small screens and watches and all the things. So it's a, it's a very different type of co conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And, and it sounds like they're, they're solving two different sides of, of similar problems. Right. Uh, I, I love that. And I love that there are so many opportunities for us to attend. Yeah. And then the strategy workshops that we do are these, uh, we, we've, we've curated this list of 130 strategy plays that UX leaders need to, to choose from. They're basically all the things that a UX leader can do to make their organizations more design infused. That we do in Chattanooga. That's at uh, at the at Center Center's uh, school, and we, so we have these leaders come in, and they actually go through the 130 plays and curate them down to their own personal uh, specialized playbook of six to eight plays. Uh, the plays are everything from socializing journey maps across the organization to integrating the CX and UX organizations to hiring methods. We spend a, about a third of the time on organization-wide plays, a third of the time on team-wide plays, and then a third time on individual plays, uh, how to get each individual team member to be as effective as possible. 
everybody walks out of there with a unique playbook that they can then, the day they get back to the office, start putting into action and making happen. And uh, people who've taken the workshop have told me that they, uh, they are getting support and traction from their senior management by just talking about these plays and how those plays are going to provide value to the, to the organization. So tell us the name and date of your conference that's coming up. So the conference is the User Interface 22 conference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our 22nd year of, of doing that conference. Congratulations. Yep, we're going to keep doing it till we get it right. And it will be in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, November 13th through 15th. Uh, what's the URL? Where would they go? UICONF.com. UICONF.com. Awesome. Thank you. Before we leave, I have a few questions I would love to ask you. You're going to ask me that thing about the sheep because it didn't happen. I'm not I mean, say, it happened. I'm not saying but, I won't. But I wasn't. <laughs> There. You weren't there. I, well, I, okay. You were there. So I was there. I didn't participate <laughs> that much. That much. <laughs> Hardly at all. <laughs> In the front. Yeah. So we call this segment. Don't believe the pictures. <laughs> you can do anything with Photoshop these days. <laughs> yes, we proved that at that event. <laughs> <laughs> we call this segment Inside the Big Design Studio. Jared, what is your favorite word? Word. Excellent. What is your least favorite word? Null. Null. <laughs> I like it. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Power buttons. Okay. What turns you off? The power, same buttons. power buttons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? My favorite curse word? Uh, great googly moogly. <laughs> That's uh, Back to the Future? This is Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa. <laughs> oh, <I'm, laughs> my gosh. Uh, Kids fail. today. Fail. Sorry. <laughs> what, uh, what sound or noise do you love? <laughs> Sound or noise do I love? <laughs> um, uh, the, the sound of, of, of the dinner bell. <laughs> also a good They Might Be Giants. Yeah, it is a good They Might Be Giants. Right. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Uh, the sound of the dinner bell when I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Uh, uh, being kept. <laughs> Look for a sugar mama? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> what profession would you not like to do? Being a speechwriter to the president. <laughs> Especially the current one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, and lastly, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Uh, I think you left your lights on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Jared, thank you so much. Guys, this has been uh, <laughs> a very meaningful time with Jared Spool at Big Design Conference. Uh, look for UI22 coming up in November in Boston. And thank you for joining us. Jared, thanks. Thank you.